man. So welcome back to another episode of Roll Time TV with Troll with the extra, bro. So we got another uh, another favorite one of my um, one of my favorite YouTubers, right? KB Go Live. Um, so he was <clears throat> so from the title, he's basically talking about NBA YoungBoy just being fenced to twenty seven months, right? Yeah, I know he was up in Utah for a while on um, house arrest. And I guess he managed to actually catch more charge while on house arrest in Salt Lake. How do you catch more charge in a in a state that's full of Mormons? And just what happened when you bring in a fucking a young boy is pleading guilty in a prescription drug fraud ring case out of his home in Huntsville. The 25-year-old rapper, whose legal name is Kentrell Galden, pleaded guilty to multiple charges today. So as part of the plea deal, Galden will not be asked to serve time in prison. And the reason for this is because he'll be serving 27 months in prison in a separate but related case. He will have to pay a $25,000 fine, and a judge also ordered him to be on probation for five years. Full resolution, but uh, if you'd like to put anything further on the record, you can do so now. No, Your Honor. Okay. Anything from the state, Mr. Keller? The uh, state will submit based on that stipulated agreement. Thank you. All right, Mr. Galden, uh, the court is going to impose a fine in the amount of $25,000 in order you to pay that today. Uh, it does appear that you do have a cashier's check in that amount now. And so based upon the stipulation between the state of Utah and Mr. Galden, the court will reduce his four felony counts on the identity fraud and the forgery down one step to cl class A misdemeanors pursuant to Utah code 76-3-402. And your case will close. Now, the reason that the court is um, willing to sent it to you to just the fine and then closing the case, Mr. Golden, is because it's been represented to me that there is a global resolution between federal prosecutors and state prosecutors, whereby you will be serving a substantial amount of time in federal prison, apparently uh, 27 months, and after which 60 months of supervised probation where you'll be monitored to make sure that you're doing well in your active recovery and that you are uh, staying out of trouble and not having any dangerous weapons, including firearms in your possession. Mr. Golden, I've seen so many times that, that uh, good men and women who have a lot of talent and potential that they can be robbed of that potential when they start to really struggle with their addiction. So I don't want that for you. You seem like a very talented young man. I'm hoping in your future that once you're done with your federal prison time that you can be really successful on federal. Remember, Utah is full of Mormons, so, you know, they're very big on their belief. So what I can tell you, honestly, um, people in Utah, like, like how Buddy's telling him, I don't want you to be robbed of your, you know, success and all that. They can, I can honestly say they genuinely, genuinely care about, about, you know, people. <sighs> Unlike if it was Chicago, Atlanta, or somewhere like that, where they wouldn't give up. Federal probation and have a really bright future where you can reach your full potential in every aspect of your life. Best of luck to you, Mr. Golden. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have, if okay. I could excuse. This bakery needs new equipment For a second there, he probably would have been like, can so I just say a quick prayer? Deck, the online lender that makes it Trust easy me, to choose your own and if approved. Ah, oh, man, it looks like NBA Youngboy has finally learned his fate when it comes to the charges that he was facing in Utah. For those of y'all who don't remember, he was originally taken into custody on April 16th of this year and was facing 46 different charges, including patterns of unlawful activity, unlawful conduct, pharmacy practices, identity fraud, and forgery. And this was all in relation to a large-scale prescription drug ring that he allegedly operated out of his 
multi-million dollar home now young boy was initially on house arrest in utah pending trial for a shooting that uh, listen what sense does it make right to grow up to grow up in whatever kind of environment that you grow up in right and all you want to see is like something a better life for yourself you get telling yourself like bro i can't wait till i get out of this shit. i can't wait till i get my mom out there you know you you say all of this that you can't wait for when you blow up you're gonna move like this and the third why is it and there's a few rappers that does this shit, right? You blow up. You are finally making uh, money off of your pain and music and, your, and, and, you know, whatever the case is. That you feel like you still need to be active on the street. You still feel like you need to be doing some kind of legal activity that can put you away for a while. Like, that's just the shit that don't make sense to me. Like, you go from, you have no other, like, you have no option. You know, you're going to sell these kind of, you're going to sell this shit. You're going to make this kind of move to try to put some food in your baby's stomach or, you know, keep some clothes on, keep the lights on, you know, help around the house. But once you make it to a certain level, why do you feel that you need to stay where you started from that could put you, you know, so that that's stupid right there, bro. Like you blow up and all that, and you got all this shit going on, and you're in a different state, still trying to do some. Like, come on, bro. It just it. It happened in 2019. It was during this time on house arrest that he apparently operated this illegal prescription fraud ring. And according to law enforcement, young boy and several of his homeboys would call in prescriptions for promethazine and codeine using fake names, forged paperwork, you know, the whole works. But this got on law enforcement's radar and they requested and executed a search warrant for his mansion where they reportedly found several prescription bottles, including the ones that had the fraudulent names that were being used now we've been waiting for months for the conclusion to this case because of the severity of the charges nobody really knew how much time young boy was facing i've seen people report five years i've seen some youtubers report 250 years is what he was facing but today we actually found out what that sentence was so young boy went into court yesterday on monday november the 18th and he pleaded guilty to two counts of third degree felony identity fraud two counts of third degree felony forgery and six counts of misdemeanor unlawful pharmacy conduct for all of the other charges that were listed young boy ended a no contest plea which just basically means that he wasn't willing to admit or deny that he committed the crime just basically saying i'm not saying i'm guilty i'm not saying i'm not guilty but i'm saying y'all have enough evidence to convict me if i go to trial now he was able to enter this plea because of a plea deal that he received and he took and because of that young boy is not going to be asked to serve any time in utah state prison instead the four felony charges that he had were reduced to class a misdemeanors and he was ordered to pay a twenty five thousand dollar fine which he paid in court yesterday now the reason why he is not going to serve time in utah state prison is simple the judge said that he was going to suspend this prison sentence because young boy is actually expected to serve another sentence a 27 month sentence in a federal prison for the gun case that was stemming out of Weber County. Now, once he's released from federal prison, he'll then be placed on five years of federal supervised probation. So y'all know I got the footage of the court hearing and we're going to run that in just a second, but you'll notice in this footage that young boy walks into the courtroom. He keeps his head down the whole time. I don't think he looks up at the judge, not a single time. He just looks kind of defeated, but the truth is this is a pretty good outcome with respect to the charges that he was hit with. Williams, um, I understand that perhaps there's going to be a change of plea today. Is that correct? That is your honor. All right, uh, would you go ahead and please state for the record what the plea agreement is that has been reached with the state? Yes, Your Honor. It is anticipated that my client will be entering guilty pleas to counts two through seven, count 13, count 16, count 19, and count 22. And there are other parameters to this uh, agreement. Would you like me to put those on the record now? Yes, please. Your Honor, it's anticipated that 
he will enter those pleas as charged. In other words, identity fraud as a third degree felony with two counts, forgery as a third degree felony, two counts, six counts of pharmacy fraud, which would be those uh, count four. And that's a class A misdemeanor. And those are all class A misdemeanors. There are six of those. And all of those cases, the counts I just recited, are those are the ends are all the pharmacy fraud cases. Um, we are asking the court to waive time for sentencing. I have some um, specific requests as it relates to sentencing um, about the language, but the agreement is that the my client will pay a $25,000 fine to the court. And Your Honor, I have a cashier's check in hand, I'm holding it now, um, that I would like to publish to the court um, at the end of this. Upon payment of that, the state has agreed to a 402 reduction for each of those four felony counts. They would all be reduced to class A misdemeanors and the case would close at that point in time. With credit for time served? Um, no credit for time served, and that has to do with his pending federal sentencing and um, an anticipated sentence within the Bureau of Prisons. Um, so what we're asking is for the court to give no credit for any time served and to simply close the case. Okay. Let's have a council just approach and we'll uh, just have a brief discussion on the bench here. I mean, you might... All right, I was able to meet with the attorneys at Sidebar and just to try to better understand a global root resolution that is happening in Mr. Galden's state cases and with his federal case. Um, I wanted to better understand um, how that global resolution would play into this case and whether or not the court felt comfortable moving forward with accepting the plea bargain and Im imposing a sentence uh, in conjunction with uh, the stipulated resolution that the parties have represented to the court. Um, I'm going to give Mr. Williams a chance to put on the record just a little bit more detail about what's happening with the federal sentence and the amount of incarceration that Mr. Galden will be receiving as to why it might make some sense for the court to accept the plea bargain. Go ahead, Mr. Williams. <clears throat> Your Honor, thank you. I'm happy to do that. Um, Your Honor, the agreement that my client has reached with the government, the federal government, is um, he, he's already entered this plea. This is a matter of public record. Um, he reached an agreement that has yet to be accepted by the district court. I, I should qualify that, that a sentence of incarceration of 27 months in the Bureau of Prisons would be a reasonable sentence. Yeah, so again, as you heard him say, he's gonna do 27 months in federal prison, no prison time for these particular charges. Instead, he's just gonna get supervised probation once he is done serving the 27 months for the federal charges. Like I said, he looks defeated in that clip right there. Bro, don't look up, not a single time. It's honestly terrible because, you know, young boy actually had something really good going for himself. His career was booming. He's making good money. He's able to take care of his family. And then it all comes to a screeching hawk because of this addiction that he's been battling maybe that 27 months will give young boy the time to sober up maybe when he gets out he comes back bigger he comes back better young boy is still young he's like 25 years old i think so when he gets out of the feds he'll be 27 28 years old which is still young enough to make a comeback continue going hard continue building out his career i know right now he feels like it's not looking good for him but honestly 27 months for everything the young boy was charged with and then some probation is not bad it could have been much worse now i hope that he does get out i hope that he does do good i hope that he does continue to provide for his family right i don't like to see nobody locked up stuck behind bars but <sighs> yeah i get the dress um shit same here man i hope he does get out i hope everything do go well like like i said one thing i can't understand is you know, you go from this one lifestyle trying to make it better to do you make it better to throwing it away or almost throwing it away. You feel me? But y'all let me know what y'all think in the video below, man. Hit that like and comment, subscribe, and I'm gonna catch on the next one.